Welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining again. I hope you're enjoying the book and thank you for having patience with me. I've never read this book so there will be do-overs. I'm not editing anything out. Um, so here we go. Chapter 4. Witches have an uneasy relationship with sleep. On the rare occasion we sleep well. It's deep and restorative, usually overdue, and that can last through an entire languorous day and night. But most of the time, that isn't the case. As they say, there's no rest for the wicked. Not that any of us buy into that wicked nonsense. <clears throat> in truth, most in the witching community simply believe we're blessed to need less sleep than our non-magical counterparts. After a night of tossing and turning, though, it certainly felt like more of a curse than a blessing to me. Murdered, Constance Graves had been murdered under our care. It was almost impossible to believe. Even though my aunts were certain after we had cleaned up the sunroom and let Precious go, I pored over every book we had on the subject. While I read, Izzy fretted and baked. Those two things often went together for Izzy. And while Izzy baked, Nora paced and ranted, tossing out plans for spells no good witch would ever dream of casting to handle the situation. Gideon occasionally interjected observations from the vents, but unfortunately, none of us got anywhere useful. We had far more questions than answers, like how did the murderer get in and up to the second floor without our noticing? The assailant certainly couldn't have gotten in through the front door or used the main staircase. We had a clear view of both from where we were, where we had been sitting in the parlor. It was possible the killer had come in earlier in the day and hidden somewhere, but that was highly unlikely. Faustus would have ferreted out the intruder. Very little got by that cat. All this meant the killer would have had to have come in either through the side or the back door of the B&B and use the hidden staircase to get up to the second floor. But the entrance to those stairs was concealed behind a door camouflaged in the panels of the wall near the kitchen. It would be almost impossible to find out, find it without prior knowledge. And we didn't often share that information with guests as the stairs did not meet safety regulations. So now, so how did the killer know to use them? The whole situation was disconcerting, to say the least, and we felt foolish for having let our guards down. But in fairness, it was easy to see how. Evanfall was such a safe town, and given who we were, it was hard to imagine a scenario in which we'd feel truly threatened. That being the case, we didn't often lock the doors until we were ready to turn in for the night. We were used to the comings and goings of guests. It had all seemed so reasonable. Still, we could have done more. Magically, we could have done more. <clears throat> Before she began baking, Izzy had set to doing just that. She had warded the house and the property behind the iron fence that surrounded the backyard. That way, someone could come up to the door without suffering any ill effects, but no one without our stated permission was getting beyond it or to the B&B &B private grounds without experiencing an excruciating headache. It was a little like closing the barn door after the horse had run off, but it still felt necessary given the circumstances. I was grateful when the sun's first rays found their way into my loft above the garage so that I could give up on the idea of rest entirely. I got up, wrapped a throw around my shoulder, and padded across the wood floor to peek out the window above the kitchen sink. A jogger loped by, panting out clouds of frosty air. Definitely scarf weather. <coughs> Any other morning, I would have made a cup of tea and started a fire in the old stone hearth to warm up the place, taking my time to get the day started. Years ago, the loft had been my great-grandmother's workroom. 
Her cauldron still rested on the mantel, and I loved everything about it, from the exposed beams of the ceiling to the old wood floors covered in plush throw rugs. But there was no time for coziness today. Now was the time for action. I splashed some water on my face, brushed my teeth, then quickly dressed in jeans, a sweater, and a thick red scarf. My grandmother had knitted it years ago, but a preservation spell kept it fresh and soft. I then pulled on my boots and dropped my messenger bag onto my shoulder. Time to get going. I thought I had made my preference of doing this alone clear, but clarity was something lacking in our household. My aunt's desire to protect and support me was wonderful. It really was. But they sometimes went overboard. I scooped up my keys. Besides, I felt pretty good about going into town today. I could go to the bookstore and see Theo. I had done it many times before. It would be fine. I didn't need my aunts hovering over me, constantly asking how I was doing. I pulled the door open. Good morning, darling. How are you doing today? I should have known. Izzy stood waiting for me on the wood platform on the other side of my front door. She had always known when I was trying to sneak out. I'd never got to go to any of the really good high school parties. I sighed, but I also couldn't help but smile. She looked pretty adorable with her plaid poncho and wicker basket. Even the tip of her nose had reddened with the cold to a shade that perfectly matched her coat. I'm fine, I said dryly. You're up awfully early. Oh, I never got to sleep. And I remembered you said something about maybe going to town. And as it happens, I have to pay a visit of my own. So I thought, why not walk together? I frowned. Izzy flipped open on the side of her basket. I brought you coffee, she said, pulling out a travel mug. I tried to resist, but Izzy made really good coffee. Really good coffee. Actually, it was probably the best coffee in the world. At least that's what I was inclined to believe on a frosty morning when I hadn't had any sleep. I took the mug from her, clicked it open, and took a sip. <sighs> First pumpkin spice of the season. I narrowed my eyes at her. You know, you act like you're a good witch, but sometimes I wonder. Don't be silly, Izzy said cheerfully. Shall we? Do I have a choice? She didn't answer, just gave me a laugh that somehow managed to sound like birds twittering. I followed my aunt down the stairs, comforting myself with the thought that at least it was Nora tagging along today. Not that I didn't love my other aunt with all my heart, but it would have been hard to lay low on this first trip into town with her threatening to turn people into frogs if they didn't confess to murder. Not that she'd do that, at least. I didn't think she would. Izzy and I walked together to the end of the driveway. Then, just as she turned, headed for the shorter route into town, I touched her elbow. I was thinking, could we maybe go the other way? Confusion came to my aunt's face. But it's so much longer, her gaze landed to the stone gates of the graveyard. It was one of the oldest in the country, dating back nearly 250 years. It was also where my husband was buried. Oh, of course, darling, of course, she patted my hand, and we changed directions. Now, I know I don't have to tell you this, she said a moment later, but we should really do our best to blend into the community today. No one can know we believe Constance's death was anything but an accident, right? <clears throat> People are understandably upset in these types of situations, and that can lead them to fear things they don't understand. I smiled inwardly. It wasn't the first time that Izzy had lectured me on this particular topic. She had practically drilled it into me before letting me go to school. Some things never change. Don't worry, I know exactly what you mean. Today we are just your average, ordinary B&B &B proprietors. It makes perfect sense we'd want to reach out and connect with our community 
given our genuine upset over the accidental death of one of our guests. Exactly. Today we are more ordinary than ordinary. We are mundane. Boring even. She looked she hooked her arm through mine as we crunched over the leaves. Everything having anything to do with us today is completely normal. Suddenly a voice rang out. Ladies, there you are. Oh no. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught sight of a man holding a rake, hurrying across his lawn to catch up with us. Izzy and I exchanged looks. I guess making a run for it wouldn't look all that normal. <laughs> Izzy sighed. <sighs> Probably not.